Hello and welcome to an Impact Gamers Clinic. I recently got a voicemail message left for me. Please leave a message after the tone. I've lost my friend. He was a little blue diamond. Well obviously we raced to the help and um, to emulate the problem we're going to go into Clicked Infusion Free Edition and look at creating multiplayer games where the screen can cope with two players. So we're going to insert a new object and an active one and that will be controlled by eight directions for player one and I'm then going to clone it to make its friend and just so we can tell the difference I will fill this one in and have a sort of fuchsia colored one here. Right there we go and we'll rename this one to player one and this one to player two get this moved by player 2 and make sure that the controls are separate for player 1 and 2 so just in the runtime options of the application application runtime options we will edit the controls so that player 1 has W, A, S and D for the movement so if I run the application you can see that they move about quite happily and there's no limits because there's no events stopping them from leaving the screen so first of all that's problematic so we will add that in. To make things easy, we'll put them in a group. So I'm going to select them both and choose the event property and a qualifier of placing them into the player group. So now these are both in the player group. I can do one in the event editor. I can go into a new condition, just one condition of when any of the players position, test position, if they try and leave the frame area on any of these areas, then we will stop them. So now if we run the application, we've locked them into place so that they cannot escape. But when your world is bigger than your frame and you want to scroll, let's have a look at that. So we're going to expand the frame. So click on the frame and this on the frame, not the application, the frame, we're going to set the size to be bigger. So let's just uh, make it a bit bigger and so that we've got a lot more space to go around in and you can see just well you can almost see the previous uh, frame size of the game and then the expanded world now because all the backgrounds white I'm just going to quickly insert a quick backdrop because if you choose a motif it's quite horrible but it allows us to see some movement on the screen in fact it's so horrible that I'm going to just dull it down a bit and make this a grey X so that my eyes can cope with it so nothing's changed apart from we've just expanded the work frame but it does mean that we can move a lot further before we're stopped we've still got the top left the top and the left but not the bottom and the right that's extended all the way down here so well we could just have a new condition saying always and we could always use storyboard controls to set the scrolling to center the window position frame on player one. So they're always following player one. That solves part of the problem. Where player one goes, it will follow along until they reach the edge. But player two can go off anywhere. So let's have a look at some ways of limiting it. We could set it so that it always goes between the two the average of the two players to future proof it a bit so that we can add multiple players I'm gonna use the average of all the players that are on the screen and to help me with that I'm going to add in two counters so I'm just going to insert a new object of a counter and we will call this average X position and then I'll just clone it and call this average Y position so what we'll do is get rid of this always and delete that so the first thing we're going to do is make sure at the beginning of the cycle we're going to set these counters to zero set this counter to zero and this one to zero and then we want to loop through and count for each of the player objects and we're going to use a condition called average which isn't made yet and now we'll make the condition a new condition with the players when you're looping around them and when you're checking them for average what we want to do is we want to for the x position we want to add to the counter 
the player that we're checking their x coordinate and then oops for this one we want to add to counter the player's y coordinate great fantastic then once we've completed that loop we'll have another always condition to always run this to center the windows position center the hor horrible center the horizontal position of the window in the frame so this is for the x coordinate and what we'll do is we'll get the average x position and what we'll do is we will divide it by the amount of players that we've got in the game the number of objects Clicked Infusion isn't great at working with decimal numbers unless it's got a decimal number in the equation. So let's put 1.0 times that number to make sure that it will give us a, a decimal. Result. And before we press OK, let's just copy this because we're going to set the scrollings, set the vertical position to be, and I'll just paste it back in and I'll just use the Y position. Save myself time. So now we run the frame, you can now see that it's following the average of them. Still not perfect because we can still leave the frame, oh let's try <laughs> still leave the frame if we go opposite directions. So let's block them in. The simplest way I found of doing this is if we go back to our frame, if we have a look at where that border is if we create some barrier blocks which is pretty much just an active object and uh, let's clear it and I make it a nice bright color so that I know that it's not part of the game it's not very bright make it a nice bright color and um, I'll set the size of it so we know that the screen is 640 um, and so let's just put the center point in the bottom left there we go and move that to zero zero. Okay, so we'll call this, let's give it a name, horizontal barrier, and then we can just clone it, I'll duplicate it even, and pop one down here. So that'll be, well it'd be 480 plus 32, so 512, there we go. Um, so that's placed at the bottom. And then we're going to add in two more. I'll just clone it so that I get a variation. And we'll call this vertical barrier. And double click on it. Let's rotate it. Let's put this back up there. And let's just make the height 480. So I'm just going to duplicate that so it can have its friend. Um, I'll do it in columns so they're next to each other and pop that over here which will be 0 and 672. The next thing we'll do is join these together and putting them into the same qualifier. So let's say that these are the closest thing is probably obstacles. Now this group doesn't have any uh, events tied to it so let's do that. New condition if a player collides with an obstacle we want them to stop. We're still not there. Oops sorry movement stop. Still not there. It's not going to work yet which just means that as soon as we hit this we're trapped and if we hit these ones we're trapped so what we're going to do is um, we're going to make these under the runtime options not follow the frame which means that they'll be set always just outside the frame area and to be honest I want to make them invisible at start that doesn't affect the collisions but it just means that there we go we can hit those and we don't hit these because these, wait a minute, pointing at the screen doesn't help, because these are following the frame, so they're always on the outside. So it means that we can go right to either end of the screen, but if we want to go off that way and that way, we are trapped. Now this works fine for multiplayer co-op games, not great for versus games because you're tied to each other and you can force each other to stop. Also, rubbish for platform games because if this character was falling down, um, and then this character is going up, they would be hovering in midair rather than falling off the screen. So we need to actually implement a split screen solution, which we will have to go to the full version of Click Team Fusion to show you how to do. 
So Zip by Magic, I've loaded up the full version and loaded up the game, and um, I've got developer running, but the full version's fine. Uh, I need this because the example I'm going to choose to use is for a Windows application. Um, hopefully, if you're interested, I'll try and show you how to do it for other platforms, but I need to change it to a Windows application because the extension I'm using is called Viewport. So if you insert a new object, you can get Viewport. If you haven't got this already installed, you can just go into your manager and install it from there. Right, so let's add the viewport down. It acts as a TV, so I'm just gonna pop this in the top left. Um, let's set the size accurately, so it'll be 320 by 480, and we'll just call this uh, screen one, maybe. Let's follow by one, and I will also clone it to get another version, and I'll do it in columns so they're next to each other for screen two. Great, okay, now, um, I'll show you the issue with these before I show you the solution. So the issue with these is that the viewport will only show something that's already shown on screen. If you're off the frame area, um, then it won't. So we have an interesting scenario where it kind of just stretches the last pixel and I'll show you what that looks like. So we go to our event editor, we don't need, uh, well, we don't need these averages and stuff like that. I'm just gonna um, turn off these lines because they're not useful. What's that one do? Yeah, we don't need that line either. Okay, a new condition is for always, and we're always going to set the source region centered to be on player one's X position because that's what it's asking for, what X coordinate, and then Y position, and then we know the width, 320, um, and the height 480. But if you had smaller widths and heights, it would be zooming in on it and stretching it to fill the screen. So that's great. Um, we'll copy this across and just change it for player two. Oops. I can just change the name because I know the name is P2. There we go, and it's fine. So if we run our frame, you can see the stretching immediately. That when we get to the edge of the screen, we get horrible stretching, and when we yeah, and it's not nice. So um, what we're going to do is sort that out. To sort it out, we'll change the window size of the application to be the same size as our game. So I'll just type that in, not that you can see very clearly. So there we go. So if I get rid of these horizontal barriers, I'll show you the second issue that we come across. So we run the application, get rid of the debugger. Um, we can move about and it will follow us, great. But we have this issue of when I start to overlap, you can see it starts showing the viewport on top of a viewport, so you're seeing a screen within a screen. Um, and that's really tricky to fix. So the easiest solution for that is to um, if I pop the barriers back in and say that they follow the frame so they stay where they are and I just zoom out a bit it's actually a little bit of a cheat can I oh I'll just type in the number then um, let's move it down to to uh, 700 that'll do and to this guy we're going to use the area below the frame in fact what I'll do just to make things easier, is I'll extend that, get rid of that, get rid of that, don't need that, move this down, it's not needed. So we've now got a frame which we, the game is in this section and the viewing is in this section. So we run the application, we're never gonna get the overlapping that we had before. We've lost a lot of our frames, so let me just make the whole game bigger. So bit bigger by 480 is uh, is what we've lost off the top so what's that going to be there we go and I'll get that back on the bottom so let's try it again now it's not even fitting on the screen good okay now to solve that we use another extension um, so this isn't a pretty solution, but it works well once, you, once you've done it. So we're gonna use another extension, which is called the window control. 
So as a new condition, at the start of the frame, we're going to have to set the window to be 640 by 480. So we will resize it to be 640 by 480. But then we need to set the position of it as well. So we need to set the position to be 0, 0. So it doesn't just take the center, which it will automatically. So frame window, what position is there? So now if we run our application, you can see we've got the things working that we need to. We've still got that issue of reaching the edge of the screen, but we can move about a lot more. The problem is if we resize, we can start to see the extra parts of the world. So we'll have to go and turn off, turn on on the application, uh, no minimize and no, no maximize. So if we run the application, there we go. We're limited to that screen resolution. And so that's a bit annoying, but if you really want a split screen game, probably just have to decide a resolution and go for it. Um, it's not a perfect solution. There's also some things we can do with attaching an active object to be on top of each of the players and using that as a reference. Um, and then you can make sure that you can't go off to the side of the screen. That gets even more complicated and there's some interesting things that you can do with layers. So you can add an extra layer on top, which is useful to mean that you have score and lives and other things. When the two of you are together, it links up to show you both on one screen and when you go off, it splits. You can have a look through the code at your own leisure, but hopefully I've solved your problem of how not to lose your friend in Click Team Fusion. I'm just learning myself with this. Um, I've taught myself off some tutorials. If you have any better ways of doing it, please comment below.